Hello, and welcome to Comparing the American Housing Survey and the American Community Survey. This webinar will explore the key differences between these two surveys and give you the information you need to decide when to use ACS or AHS data. Let's get started. The American Housing Survey, also known as the AHS, and the American Community Survey, also known as the ACS, are valuable sources of information for studying the U.S. housing stock. Both surveys ask questions on similar housing topics. So, which source should you use to answer your housing questions? Let's start by looking at what the American Housing Survey is all about. The American Housing Survey is often called the nation's most comprehensive housing survey. The AHS provides accurate, up-to-date information on housing quality, housing costs, and neighborhood assets, along with topical information on unique housing concerns. Policymakers, researchers, and housing professionals use AHS data to assess and monitor the nation's housing needs and to stay up-to-date on what's going on in the housing market. The AHS collects some information about the people that occupy the households being surveyed, but its main purpose is to provide data on the nation's housing units. How does the American Community Survey compare? Let's take a closer look. The American Community Survey is another premier source for vital housing data. Different from the AHS, the ACS also collects detailed population information including data on jobs and occupations, educational attainment, and other topics that are not related to housing. State and federal governments use the ACS data to determine how more than $675 billion in federal and state funds are spent on infrastructure and services each year. Now, we'll look at who sponsors the AHS and the ACS. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, sponsors the American Housing Survey, and the U.S. Census Bureau, or Census, administers it. That means HUD pays for the AHS and applies the agency's deep understanding of the nation's housing market to determine the content, including what questions to ask, what metropolitan areas to survey, the sample size, and the geographic coverage. The Census Bureau carries out the survey research for the AHS. Census designs the survey instrument, tests the questions, selects the sample of individual housing units, sends out field representatives to conduct the survey, and prepares the data for publication. Different from the AHS, the ACS is both sponsored and administered by the Census Bureau. Census uses their expertise in federal survey research to develop the content and questions for the ACS and to conduct the survey. Now, we'll compare who gets interviewed on each survey and how often. Both the AHS and the ACS are household surveys, meaning households are picked at random to receive the survey. But the two surveys differ in who is interviewed and how often. First, the ACS happens every year, while the AHS happens every two years. The AHS is longitudinal, meaning the same housing units are visited every two or four years, the ACS is not. In fact, the AHS is one of the only longitudinal housing surveys in the world, which makes it the best data source for users interested in studying changes to the U.S. housing stock over time. The previous AHS sample of housing units was revisited every other year from 1985 to 2013. A new sample of housing units was selected in 2015 and will be revisited every other year for years to come. Another key difference, the ACS includes group quarters, such as dormitories. The AHS does not include group quarters. Finally, the AHS does not include any households in Puerto Rico, where the Census Bureau conducts a version of the ACS for Puerto Rico called the Puerto Rico Community Survey. Let's compare how long the surveys have been conducted. The AHS has been around since 1973. The ACS has been conducted since 2001. Now, let's look at each survey's sample design. For example, let's compare how many households participate in each survey. The AHS sample is much smaller than the ACS sample, with about 83,000 completed interviews each survey year. 
The ACS sample is very large, with about 2.2 million completed interviews every year. For both surveys, the Census Bureau randomly selects households to participate, but there are important differences in the way Census selects which households to survey for each. Let's take a closer look at how Census picks who receives the AHS and the ACS. For the ACS, Census selects households in every county throughout the U.S., including Alaska and Hawaii. Because of its small sample size, the AHS is not conducted in every county throughout the U.S. In fact, the AHS is administered in only about 1,000 counties throughout the U.S. These 1,000 counties are selected to be representative of all other counties. As the sponsor of the AHS, HUD is especially interested in producing housing statistics for the largest cities in the U.S., to achieve that goal, the AHS sample includes about 3,000 households in each of the 15 largest cities and 20 other large cities. Since the 2015 survey, the AHS sample has featured two parts. Part 1 is an integrated national sample, made up of a representative sample of the nation, representative oversamples of each of the country's 15 largest metropolitan areas, and a representative oversample of HUD-assisted housing units. HUD and Census survey the entire integrated national sample once every two years. Part 2 of the AHS sample features independent metropolitan area samples chosen from America's top 50 largest cities. Each survey year on a rotating basis, HUD and Census survey one half of what we refer to as the next 20 group of metropolitan areas, metropolitan areas ranging from 16th to 51st largest by population. That means we survey each member of the next 20 group of metropolitan areas once every four years. Now, let's examine who selects the questions asked in each survey. Since ACS is sponsored by Census, they are responsible for selecting the questions in the survey. Generally speaking, the ACS questions change very little between surveys. Census is responsible for determining how much the questions in the survey will change. As the sponsor of the AHS, HUD is responsible for selecting the questions in this survey. Groups of questions in the AHS are called modules, and there are two types of these modules. Core modules are questions that appear each time the AHS is conducted. Rotating topical modules are questions about special topics that appear in one survey year and then are rotated out, perhaps to reappear four or six years later. Users will find many similarities in the types of questions asked in both the AHS and the ACS. For example, the AHS and the ACS include virtually identical questions on basic housing topics, including whether the unit is occupied or vacant, whether the unit is owned or rented, the type of structure, such as a single-family home or an apartment unit, the year the structure built, and the number of rooms and bedrooms. The AHS and the ACS also include virtually identical questions on the type of fuel used for heating, utility costs, the presence of a kitchen and kitchen appliances, and the presence of basic plumbing features such as toilets, sinks, a shower or tub, and hot and cold running water. Both surveys include the same kinds of questions on home values and housing costs, including rent or homeowner costs such as mortgage, property taxes, and insurance. Both surveys also collect basic demographic information about all the people who live in the selected housing unit, including age, gender, race and ethnicity, and citizenship status. And both surveys collect demographic information such as educational attainment, marital status, disability status, and year the householder moved into the housing unit. Both surveys include basic questions about income and income sources. Both surveys also include basic questions about financial assistance, such as Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF, and Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Programs, or SNAP, commonly referred to as food stamps. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the kinds of questions that are asked in the AHS that are not included in the ACS. 
users will find many types of questions in the AHS that are not asked in the ACS. For instance, the AHS includes more questions about the housing structure, including the size of the housing unit, the presence of a garage, the type of heating and cooling system, and the presence of structural amenities such as a porch and fireplace. The AHS also includes questions about appliances such as washer, dryer, and dishwasher that are not found in the ACS. The AHS takes a much deeper dive into housing quality, including the adequacy of plumbing, heating, and electricity, deficiencies such as signs of mice and cockroaches or cracks, holes, and broken plaster, toilet breakdowns, and heating problems, including breakdowns and utility interruptions, inadequate insulation, or the cost of heating. The AHS also delves into housing quality issues like water leakage, external building conditions such as a sagging roof, broken windows, or a crumbling foundation, the presence of mold, and sewage disposal breakdowns. Another key difference in the surveys, the AHS takes a closer look at housing costs and affordability. It includes more questions about mortgage information, remodeling costs and types of projects, and the cost of upkeep. Different from the ACS, the AHS also includes questions about rental subsidies. The AHS also includes questions about neighborhood quality, including the presence of bodies of water in the area, bars on windows, vandalized or abandoned buildings, trash, litter, or junk on the streets, as well as opinions on schools, crime, bus, subway and commuter bus service, and the risk for disaster. Users will also find questions about reasons for moving and the search for new housing in the AHS. For instance, the AHS collects data on the type, tenure, and number of people living in the previous residence, as well as data on how housing costs change due to a move and the reasons for leaving. The survey also looks at the search for housing, asking questions about how movers found their new home and their satisfaction with their new neighborhoods. There is one major difference between the two surveys that is important to note. Each AHS contains special rotating topics that appear in one survey and are replaced in the next survey. Commuting costs and modes, home accessibility, health and safety characteristics, and emergency and disaster preparedness are some of the recent topics. The AHS has also included topical modules on delinquent payments and notices, evictions, food security, housing counseling, and neighborhood arts and cultural resources. We've looked at the types of questions that are unique to the AHS. Now, let's take a look at the types of questions that are asked in the ACS but not in the AHS. The ACS includes a variety of questions that are not found in the AHS. For example, the ACS includes questions about computer, laptop, and tablet ownership as well as questions about how households access the internet, cell phone, DSL, cable modem. The survey includes a question about household automobile ownership, a question about ancestors and ethnic origin, and a question about the type of bachelor's degree, if applicable. The ACS contains a question about the type of health insurance, as well as questions about VA service-connected disability status and rating. The ACS includes a question about commuting methods and the journey to work. The survey also asks questions about the number of hours worked and the type of work performed, along with questions about profession. Another helpful way to compare the AHS and the ACS is by the types of data products that are available to help you access the results and use the data in your work. Let's compare the two surveys. The ACS and AHS both have web pages on census.gov with a wealth of information about each survey. Summary table estimates and microdata are the two main data products for both surveys. Both surveys have summary data tools to help you access your summary tables quickly and easily. For example, the AHS Table Creator is a user-friendly web application that gives you access to tens of thousands of pre-calculated tables that you can download in HTML or Excel format without statistical software. 
Similarly, the ACS provides easy access to a wide variety of data estimates via American Fact Finder. More experienced data users can access either survey's public use microdata files, files containing the individual level responses to the survey questions. In the AHS, microdata files are known as public use files or PUF files. The ACS refers to its microdata as PUMS or the Public Use Microdata Sample. The AHS PUF microdata includes all housing units that were interviewed, while the ACS PUMS includes only a sample of the housing units that were interviewed. Both the PUF and the PUMS have limited geographic indicators available. The AHS PUF includes census division and metro area name for the nation's large metro areas. The PUMS contain states and PUMAs, which are areas of 100,000 persons or more. Both surveys have resources on their websites to help you use the public use microdata. The AHS codebook has information about each variable's basic description, availability, question text, answers, and other notes. The mini codebook is a list of AHS variables, their descriptions, and whether they are included in the public use files. It can help you find the exact variable names as they appear on the PUF and codebook. A link to the mini codebook is located on the lower left corner of the AHS codebook webpage. Similarly, the ACS has a data dictionary with information about each variable. You can find it in the technical documentation section of the ACS website. Both surveys have public use file users guides. Getting started with the Public Use File 2015 and Beyond provides a user-friendly introduction to the 2015 and 2017 AHS PUF microdata. This free Getting Started Guide explains important differences between the 2015 and 2017 PUFs relative to prior year PUFs. You can download the guide from the Technical Documentation section on the American Housing Survey website. The Handbook what Public Use Microdata Sample Data Users Need to Know gives ACS users valuable information on how to access the microdata and produce their own tables. You can download this guide from the Publications section of the Census website. And both surveys provide estimates for user verification, which are sets of summary estimates to help microdata data users verify they are using the microdata correctly. Finally, we'll look at how the surveys compare when it comes to estimates for small areas, such as towns or census tracts. The sample for the AHS consists of over 100,000 housing units, but only about 83,000 households complete an AHS interview. This is enough data to create statistics that represent the nation as a whole, the region, northeast, midwest, south, and west, select states, the nine census divisions, the top 15 largest metro areas, and 20 rotating metro areas. The AHS does not have a large enough sample to generate statistics specific to smaller areas such as cities, towns, or census tracts. The AHS is not the right data source for users interested in studying or comparing counties or other smaller areas. On the other hand, few surveys have a sample as large as the ACS. Every year, it collects data from more than 2 million households. With such a large sample, the ACS can be used to create annual statistics for the nation as a whole, each of the 50 U.S. states, as well as counties, cities, and other areas with populations of 20,000 or more. It is important to note that the Census Bureau also produces estimates for areas with populations less than 20,000. Census does this by combining five years of ACS data. Since the AHS is longitudinal, surveying the same housing units, it cannot combine samples like the ACS. If you are interested in studying or comparing areas with smaller populations, the ACS is an excellent data source to meet your needs. On behalf of the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the U.S. Census Bureau, we would like to thank you so much for joining us for today's presentation on how the American Housing Survey differs from the American Community Survey. We hope this information has been helpful in deciding which survey is best suited to answer your data questions. 
It's just one of the ways we're working to make it as easy as possible for you to use HUD and census housing data in your work.